Hi, well, welcome, welcome to uh, uh, the after show video of Headful of Useless Information About Movies. I myself am Francis von Zernick, the host, and this is Dan Mervish, a wonderful director. And the guest. And the guest. The guest. Uh, uh, yeah. But a, a great director, Thank you. co founder of a, a Slam Dance Film Festival. Yes. You have a picture opening up. I have a picture I'm a, opening up. I'm a critically acclaimed author. A critically acclaimed author. Right. Uh, 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 so many things, so many and now things. I can't think of any of them. No, I know, but I directed a movie called Between Us, uh, starring Julia Stiles, Tay Diggs, Melissa George, David Harbour, and it's opening up June 21st. June 21st. The country, in theaters near you. And it's, it's a, I watched it last night, you were kind enough to send me a screener of well, it, and it's you. fantastic. It's Along fun. the lines of, it's a different subject matter, kind of, but carnage, uh, a bug, uh, 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 kind of killer Joe, not in the subject matter, but in the fact that it, 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 it's from a play, right, so and it's people talking in a room. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yes. But it, it's riveting. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. Great performer. <laughs> He's writing down uh, uh, blurbs. quotes, blurbs. Yes. Uh, um, uh, it's fantastic. It opens June 21st, and it has a really good cast. It's yeah, a, amazing, it's a yeah. smaller movie. It, it, from what I, I understand, it doesn't look or feel like a small movie. No. It's not. Well, but it's, it's small in, in range, as far as... It, you tell me. Yeah. Well, it's a... It's a, it's a good cast. Yeah, it's I'm a wonderful to, cast. Yeah. So, um, uh, and the thing is, when you make an independent movie, as, as we've done... Cause yes. In, in this one, we started to make the movie, <coughs> excuse me, in 2008. And, and we thought we were going to make it then. And I had gotten together with Joe Ortua, the playwright. It had been a big hit off-Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I passed on making uh, uh, an adaptation of um, Ides of March. And that Clooney fella, he gets a happy ending for uh -huh. the sloppy end seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's went places. But I didn't yeah. want to do that one. I wanted to do Between Us. And it's basically two couples yelling and throwing things. That's sort of the simple version of it. Yes, the simple version the of it, version. yeah. But, um, but I really liked it, and I thought I could relate to it. In the original play, the whole first act was set in a Midwestern house, and the whole second act was set in a New York apartment two years later. Right. And my idea, when I approached Joe, the playwright, was, okay, what if we sort of intertwine them? Because people always say when you're making a play adaptation, how are you going to open it up? Mm -hmm. and, and really what they should be saying is, how are you going to make it more cinematic? Yeah, yeah. It's not just moving just, locations. It's yeah. also what can you do with the camera in terms of close-ups yeah. and push-ins and moving it, and also in editing, what can you do time-wise, going back and forth, and so that's really what we did, uh, that's a big part of what we did in the adaptation, and we thought we were going to make it for two or three million dollars, okay, you know, in 2008. looks like you made it for two it three does, million dollars, it does, doesn't it, yeah, yes, yeah, at yeah. least, when in fact we made it for 20, and it, 20 million dollars, no, <laughs> Oh, then it's terrible. Yeah, what are you doing? No, no. It's no. like they say about yeah. <laughs> Kevin Smith's film Clerks, the only $10,000 movie that looks like it was shot for $5,000. It's true, yeah. So, um, but, uh, <coughs> but anyway, but the economy collapsed. And, uh, oh, okay. And so oh, you right. couldn't get it. Remember, you couldn't get any movie made yeah. at that price at that time for anything. But luckily for me, I had a whole separate little side project going in my garage with another friend of mine. Uh, which was uh, turned into the Eisenstadt project, a fake. We, we had created. Talk a, about that. A it's fake, fascinating. A fake pundit during the 2008 uh -huh. presidential campaign, a fake McCain advisor, and he was quoted in the media. Now this was all because we developed out of a series of short films and a TV pitch. So we were kind of incubating the character online, but people thought he was real. He was quoted in the L.A. Times and Fox News right. and MSNBC and this whole thing, and it kind of culminated with. Uh, Sarah Palin said that she thought that Africa was a country instead of a continent, mm -hmm. which she really did say, but uh, an anonymous McCain advisor leaked it to Fox News. So our character, Marty Eisenstadt, took credit for this uh, being the source right, of that leak. Yeah. All of a sudden, three hours later, MSNBC has blah, 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 breaking news, Marty Eisenstadt is the source of the Palin Africa story. And, you know, they had egg on their face because if you had Googled him in 30 seconds, you would have known he wasn't real. Yeah. Now, still no one knew who was behind him, even though they didn't know he was real. Um, so we added ourselves to the New York Times. They wrote a big half-page profile on us two days later. AP picked it up. It ran all over the world. CNN put us on because they could make fun of MSNBC. Uh -huh. And the next day we got a book offer from Farrar strauss Tarot, who I thought was a hoax, but it turns out they're one <laughs> of the most prestigious publishers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It tells you how much I read yeah. And, um, and so when presented with the option of do you keep not getting paid to not direct a movie or do you get paid to write a book, one's wife wisely advises you 
to write the book. Right, yeah, so we wrote the book. We had a lot of fun with it. Uh, it's called uh, I Am Martin Eisenstadt, One Man's Wildly Inappropriated uh -huh. Adventures with the Last Republicans. We had a great book tour. Almost as it. long of title so, as this it, show. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, Joe Lockhart, Bill Clinton's press secretary, threw a big party for us at his house in Georgetown, you know, and all the real pundits were there. Crazy stories, and, and, and it did very well. And then we, we came close to making it as a TV show. Ashton Kutcher was going to produce right, it. Right, right, right. And we came close to a Showtime deal. Anyway, and it didn't happen. Some executive got fired midway through the chain. And Can I interrupt? It it it's set, but one of your you movies, yes. I don't want to uh, uh, blow the show, but uh, one of the movies on your list is MASH. Yes. And it seems, maybe because that's already on my mind, it seems a very Hawkeye thing to do, like this whole thing. Yeah, like it's exactly. A, uh, yeah, and, and if you think about the films on my list, they're all kind of these yeah. uh, kind of confident, but defiant people. Buckaroo Bonds. Yeah, you're, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that yeah, jazz. Yeah. You know, oh, we're not supposed to say who Well, the uh, yeah, list but the, the, he talk, we talk so about these movies. So you'll have to see. You'll have to listen what, to the show. Yeah, but I think you're right. You know, even, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. even. Uh, uh, so, all right, so yeah, anyway. anyway, so when that whole project had kind of run its course, I mean, we're still kind of working on it a little bit, but it had more or less run its course. Uh, my old casting director from Open House, uh, Liz, she said, you know what, why don't we get back to making Between Us, but do it on a micro-budget level. That's what we know how to do. Right. You're the slam dance guy. You actually know how to do this. Yeah. It's four people in two rooms. What could possibly go wrong? Right. <laughs> and um, so we started raising money essentially on Kickstarter. Uh, that's a new thing. That's, that's a, a new thing with the kids are, these days. Well, no, but And I just wrote a whole a thing. thing on uh, IndieWire and Huffington Post about uh -huh. how Kickstarter has really changed Change. the paradigm of how you raise money. Yeah. Or you would ask for investment if for investors and you please invest in my movie and then you would not pay these people back and then they would break your kneecaps right now right. you say oh please donate to my yeah film. and it's a write oh, off I, and, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. but the point is the concept is you donate to a film in the same way you donate to public radio you get a tote bag right you know? hey I should have you get people, a tote uh, bag yeah, or, yeah. or to the symphony or to the opera it's another art form and you don't expect to invest in an opera, you know? right? So, um, so I think that so you started with Kickstarter. Started. Yeah, we found other yeah. investors, okay. and a lot, and then and if we found just enough money to set a start date, which is the key thing for yes. filmmakers. And then we got yes. a cast because it went back to a lot of the actors and agents that we had from the first incarnation when we thought it was going to be a big movie. Because uh -huh. so, then, when you think it's a few million dollars, you can get people to read the script. Yeah. Um, Ooh, so we went yeah. back to those people. We said, "Well, the budget's not exactly the same, but the script is exactly the same, and the parts are still good, and people liked it." And yeah. meanwhile, I had been a successful author, so I was like, "Oh, okay, that's why you took two years off." And so we got Tay Diggs. He came on board right away. He loved it. And uh, Julia Stiles had always been on our list. We always liked her, but she was going to be in a Neil LeBute play on Broadway. Oh, and oh. so I thought, well, she's booked for the next six months. But her agent called me up one day while I was meeting one of his other clients, which is uh -huh. interesting. And um, and he said, are you interested in Julia? I said, yeah. And she booked out. And he says, no, the play, they lost their financing two oh. hours ago. Oh. They'd been rehearsing. For yeah, I heard speech. about this. Yeah. yeah. They lost their finance. And he said, she's completely distraught. We don't know what to do with her. No Hollywood movie's going to, you know, book her next week. You know? Right, But right. we were getting ready to start shooting. And he said, do you want her? I said, yeah, of course, send her the script. 24 hours later, she calls me up. She's like, I'm in. That's and a, you know, that's a, and a week later, she was in yeah. L.A. rehearsing yeah. in my kitchen. You know. So, uh, and then we got uh, well, Melissa George. I'm a big Melissa George fan. Yes. How did that happen? Uh, she uh, was, uh, you know, again, you set the start date, and it, you kind of have to have balls of steel. Yeah, and yeah. And stick to that date. And this is what I learned from Altman, too. You know, you, you, you set the start date. And you'll get a cast. You don't know who it's going to be, but you'll get someone. Because the closer you get to the start date, the more nervous actors and their agents get like, oh, no, my this client's not working for the next four weeks. They're going to be bugging me. Let's yeah. get them on this. You know, it doesn't matter how what the budget is. It doesn't matter what you're going to pay them. You're going to get a good cast. Let me for forget about that we're being filmed right now. I have actually a, a question. Okay. I, 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 I have a... <laughs> I have, uh, uh, I'm uh, kind of uh, going through the same thing. I was a director and a writer, and I, and I, had, I took a very long uh, hiatus for whatever reason. Right. Um, and I'm getting back, I have a script, and I'm doing it. And I am, I'm with, I'm doing it with two, uh, two producers. Who are, who are, In other words, you're doing it yourself. Yeah, well, yeah. Ba ba no, 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 <laughs> these are wonderful girls, and I'm not wonderful. doing it myself. Yes. No, no, no. 
Um, but we're doing this start date thing because I yes. deadlines as a writer are so important to me. Right. And they did. We're starting shooting this. But there is, and I, I'm doing this for me, but I'm also doing it for young filmmakers who are obviously going to listen and watch right, this video. Yeah. No, because you're very influential in independent film, right. you know? Uh, it's one thing to have a start date yes. and say, okay, September 21st is our start date. Right. But is there something that it feels like I'm missing this je ne sais quoi thing, this, this thing, like I need a thing. Well, the trick is, yeah, that's the real the, trick is yeah. to have the relationships with the talent agents and managers. Okay, So all that right. you have someone to call when you're three weeks out and right. your cast is dropped right. out. You know? uh, and we had that. We had developed those relationships because. over about four years. Because of the previous incarnation. Because of the, the previous picture. incarnation and before that with open houses. So, you know, developing those relationships over the years and staying right. in touch even over the two years. Yeah. When when I was working on the book, we would still kind of stay in touch with some of the yeah. actors and some okay. of the Okay. So that's I think the key, so that you've got those people to tap into right away. So you can say, Okay, I okay. need this person, this kind of person, who do you have? and who's available. That's good because to know. Because for most actors, as you know, it's not about the money. It's about, is the part good? And am I available? Because yeah. They don't, yeah. you know, everyone, actors abhor a vacuum. They're yes. Like, oh my God, I'm not doing anything next week. Yeah. What is there? Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and agents hate having actors call them. Yes. Yeah. During yeah. that time. Yeah. So that's why you can get a great cast. Um, okay. I, this is, these are questions that I think I'm not the only one, you know. Well, should we bring it Let's, this segment well, to a close? Wow, you are a director. To, you know what? Yes. No, now we're going to just keep going. Yes. Yeah. Uh, will someone please well, pee in well, my mango juice? Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, 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 listen to the show. It's a really good show. Really good. Uh, really part, good. This Excellent is host. The, this is the... Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, this is uh, the after show video for part one of one. It's a two-parter. It'll be aired in, two, in, in sequential weeks. Uh, but click on the link below or above, depending if you're on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook. Um, and listen to the show. It's really good. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you next week. So anyway.